Warrior. Connecting you. This is Iowa's News Now at 10. From the State House to the White House, this is Iowa's News Now beyond the podium coverage of election 2024. And lots to cover across the state of Iowa and across the country. We start with team coverage and we'll get to our team coverage here in Iowa's first congressional district, Nick El Hodge and Nicole Danzler splitting duties uh, covering that race for us here. One of those we were watching really closely tonight. We've also got State House reporter Skylar Fall covering District 3, that congressional race, which is turning into a heck of a one there in central Iowa. Uh, we also have crews at uh, Congresswoman Ashley Hinson's watch party in Cedar Rapids, hoping to hear from uh, her competitor as well, Sarah Corkery, in that second congressional district race. But we start tonight at 10 on Iowa's News Now with the race for the White House in the last 15 minutes or so. It has been called for the state of Iowa and those six electoral votes for Donald Trump, the third consecutive general election. He has won the Hawkeye State. You see there was 69% of precincts reporting Trump with a 13 point advantage over Kamala Harris, only about 96 hours removed from that Des Moines Register poll that had Harris with a three point lead. Of course, Trump won the state by about eight points and nine and a half points in 16 and 20. And again, uh, there was some optimism on the Democratic side that maybe things were turning with that poll, but uh, seeing the tables go the other way there. And you see the full map here for the electoral votes from the Associated Press. Those are the numbers we are using here at Iowa's News Now. And you see Trump 210 electoral votes so far compared to 113 for Kamala Harris. Trump 60 electoral votes away from a return to the White House. We are joined by our analysis team that we've had here through the entire night here at Iowa's News Now. Of course, you know Nick Weig, our uh, anchor and political correspondent and, and reporter. State Senator Liz Bennett, who's not running for re-election, so kind enough to join us here tonight. And uh, Bennett Hubbard, who is the chair of the Lynn County Republicans here. Uh, we'll, we'll start with you uh, and, and the news that we've been following here, Bennett, of uh, Donald Trump and, and this win that right now, compared to 16 and 20, looks like he might be on, on his way to even surpassing that. Does that surprise you at all? Um, maybe a little bit, but I mean, Trump has been very favorable in the Hawkeye state here. I mean, looking back at the caucuses that we had in January, the first president presidential candidate in a contested primary and caucus to get over 50% of the vote there. So, I mean, he's always been very popular here in Iowa. So the fact that he's got this big of a lead right now, maybe it's a little shocking that it's this big, but I'm not surprised at all. Like I said early on, the Emerson College poll that had about that 10 point lead that came out on Saturday, I think from things that I heard on the ground and stuff like that after it was released, said that that was a much more accurate picture of what the Hawkeye State was going to turn out to be, and it's turning out to be the case here. Liz, we've talked uh, already tonight about just the optimism, though, across the Democratic Party in the state of Iowa, and we are seeing a couple of those congressional races really showing out on the liberal side. Yep, absolutely. We have some really close races here, um, particularly District, District 3 and District 1. And I think it tells you a lot when you have a race against an incumbent that is so close. So I think we are remaining hopeful for those races for sure. And we'd also mentioned that um, in Des Moines, um, our Democratic challenger, Matt Blake, took out sitting incumbent Brad Zahn, um, who had been in the legislature for a long time. So definitely some bright spots and some hope for Democrats tonight. And of course, uh, Nick Wag keeping an eye on everything, anything and everything. He's all, even brought the laptop over, his own <laughs> laptop here, uh, to keep an eye on things. Yeah, we have uh, Republicans <coughs> now leading in every contest here in Iowa. Zach Nunn has pulled just ahead of Lenon Bacom. Uh, very little outstanding vote in Polk County. Those rural counties are starting to run up the numbers uh, for Congressman Nunn, uh, but we're talking about a 2,000 vote difference between them right now. Uh, real quick, District 1, uh, Marionette Miller Meeks maintaining a lead of about 13,000 votes right now, uh, with the majority of it now in. Problem is, not really getting many numbers out of Johnson or Lynn County yet, so that is still too close to call. Still watching that, and of course we'll have those live reports coming up from uh, that first congressional district crews at both of those watch parties tonight. Let's start though with the district that I think we all thought would be called first, and it has been called first, Randy Feenstra, with a three to one advantage almost over Ryan Melton there in a, in a district that is traditionally pretty red in the state of Iowa. You see there with 54% of precincts reporting, uh, Randy Feenstra will remain in Congress representing Iowa's fourth congressional district. Let's get to the races that we've talked about that were considered to be possible toss ups. These are races they were watching in Washington, races that could help decide the balance of power in the House of Representatives. 
District 1, Marinette Miller-Meeks going for that third term, which would be a second consecutive win over Christina Bohan. And you see there 58% of precincts reporting Miller-Meeks with a six point advantage over Bohannon, but you just heard Nick talk about uh, still getting some votes in. We go live now to Riverside Casino in Washington County. Iowa's News Now anchor Nicole Danzler live at Miller Meeks's watch party at Riverside. Nicole, the numbers continue to come in. The advantage remaining about the same for Miller Meeks. What is the mood there at the watch party at Riverside? Yeah, Mitch Marionette Miller Meeks is once again trying to keep her seat in Congress to represent Iowa's first district. Now, she actually just walked into the Riverside Casino just a few minutes ago, and now she's talking to folks in the audience. So I'm just going to step out of the camera to show you what's going on behind me right now. We're told that she is with her family and her friends and her campaign team tonight. Um, as of 9.53 p.m., Miller Meeks leads the race with 52.6%, and that's what 66% of the votes counted. Miller Meeks says that she's confident as she looks to get a second straight election night win over Christina Bohannon. This is a key race that saw the candidates clashing on border security, immigration policy, and the economy. But one issue that could sway voters tonight is abortion. This summer, an Iowa law took effect banning abortions after six weeks with some exceptions. Still, Miller Meeks is hoping to pull ahead for the win in the first district, which covers much of the southeastern part of the state, including parts of Iowa City, Burlington, Oskaloosa, and Newton, and Indianola. So we're still waiting for Miller Meeks to take the stage and speak tonight. So we'll have more updates for you tonight about that coming up in just a bit. But for now, live in Riverside, Nicole Dantzler, Iowa's News Now. Nicole, thank you. We turn from Miller Meeks' watch party to Christina Bohannon's in Iowa City. Iowa's News Now reporter Nick El Hodge live for us at Big Grove off Gilbert Street in Iowa City with uh, the, the watch party there for Bohannon. Again, uh, last check, Nick, down six points. What is the mood there at Big Grove tonight? Mitch, people are really starting to get anxious here at Big Grove in Iowa City, where Christina Bohannon's supporters are waiting for more results in this tight first district race. Every screen is tuned in, every auditor's website is up, and you can really feel the crowd's nerves growing by the minute as those initial results start to trickle in. Bohannon hasn't made an appearance yet, keeping everyone here on edge as they watch the numbers. Now, Iowa has leaned more Republican recently, but this district remains a swing one, with both parties working hard to claim it tonight. Supporters tell me they're anxious and worried, but no, this could go down to the wire. We'll be here to keep you updated as it unfolds. Live from Big Grove, Nick Ahaj, Iowa's News Now. Nick, thank you. We turn now our focus to District 3, and again, this is turning into a tight one. You see here as Zach Nunn pursues a second term in Congress, Lanon Bakam in the early goings here in Central Iowa had an eight-point advantage over Nunn, but you see here with 84% of precincts reporting, this is only a race decided right now by 3,300 votes as none now holding that slight advantage there to try to get that second term in Washington. The two races in Iowa that uh, experts thought wouldn't be maybe as close. You see the advantage here for Ashley Hinson as she pursues a third term in Washington as well. 57% compared to 42% for Sarah Corkery, 86% of precincts reporting there in Iowa's third or second congressional district rather. As we take a live look at her watch party, not too far from us here at Broadcast Park in Northeast Cedar Rapids, just down Collins Road. Take a ride onto First Avenue and you'll be at spare time there and you take a live look as we are uh, waiting for Representative Hinson to take the podium there and uh, you see quite the turnout for her as she pursues and, and appears to be closing in on a third term representing Iowa's uh, district in Congress. We're going to have coverage from Des Moines after the break on Iowa's News Now again watching that third congressional district separated just by a few thousand votes and one of those that they're watching on a national level as well. We got a live report coming up after the break. Back on Iowa's News Now as we continue to watch a very close race in Iowa's 3rd Congressional District. 84% of precincts reporting in Iowa's 3rd and you see there Zach Nunn, the incumbent, going for a second term in Congress with a lead of about 3,300 votes over Lanon Bakam, who early in the going tonight had about an 8-point advantage over the incumbent Nunn. We want to go live right now to Des Moines, Iowa's News Now State House reporter Skylar Talal following this race as they are in Washington to Skylar, a race that they thought might help determine the balance of power in the House of Representatives. You're at Bacom's watch party. What have the mood been like in really the last half hour, 45 minutes, an hour as things have really gotten close and now none with the slight advantage? 
Yeah, mood. Yeah, Mitch. The mood has definitely shifted here. Um, you know, whenever we got here, there were a bunch of smiles. And now everyone's kind of just, you know, keeping their mouth shut, watching the screen. You can even see over here, it has started to kind of fill back up, but a lot of people have actually left. Uh, we've been seeing people kind of, you know, file out. Um, you know, Bacom and Nunn are still neck and neck. Um, it is something that we did expect. We've talked about the, the 2022 midterms. You know, this is a, a tight, competitive race. Um, I think Democrats, you know, came into this very energized, very excited, especially after seeing, you know, that Des Moines Register poll over the weekend. Um, and, and now I think they're kind of just, just waiting to see what those results are. Live in Des Moines, Skylar Fall, Iowa's News Now. Thank you, Skylar. And we want to go live now, I believe, to uh, Ashley Hinson's uh, party. Again, this is just uh, in Northeast Cedar Rapids at spare time, just off uh, um, First Avenue, where in the last few minutes uh, the race has been called. She will serve a thir third term in Congress. So let's take a live listen uh, to Representative Hinson addressing the crowd in Cedar Rapids. For a lot of those final results to roll in from across the country, but I don't know about you, I think tomorrow is going to be a great day, don't you? Yeah. I think we're going to wake up happy. It's the day we officially send Joe Biden to the beach into retirement and Kamala Harris hopefully packing back to California where she belongs. I, yeah, let's fire Kamala, right? Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be a great new day in America with strong conservative leadership in Washington, D.C. once again. And I'm hopeful we will have President Trump leading us in the White House once again as well. So let's talk about what day one of a President Trump will look like. Closing the border. I think we all agree that needs to happen. Restarting American energy projects. Firing swamp bureaucrats. We need to do a little of that. And you know what? I know the man pretty well. I bet he'll do most of that before most of us are on our second cup of coffee tomorrow morning. He's going to be busy. But it's going to be nice to have a president who doesn't need a mid-afternoon nap in order to get through the day. Someone who's going to work around the clock for working families like we have here in Iowa. And a president that will make America great again. Let's go do that, huh? So I ran for Congress as a mom to fight for my kids, to fight for yours. I'm a minivan driving mom. Um, I ran because celebrating I a love Iowa win so much. for a third term in Congress there as you take a live look at her watch party in Cedar Rapids. Plenty of election coverage still ahead on Iowa's News Now. Back on Iowa's News Now this election night 2024, we want to talk about a state house race in central Iowa and you see the results here and we'll tell you why this is significant. This is Matt Blake, Democratic challenger winning with 100% of precincts reporting in District 22 for the State Senate, a four-point win over Brad Zahn, who has been in the State House for a number of years. He is currently the Senate pro tem, so this is a big win for Democrats there in the State House as they try to get any sort of foothold on uh, making uh, some headway in cutting into the Republican advantage there in the State House in Des Moines. And it is official, Iowa's Constitution will be changing after this election season. The Associated Press calling both ballot measures final. We talked about these for a couple of weeks. Now the first question was really just going to codify the voting age as 18 in the state of Iowa. You've been able to vote at age 18 in the state for a while. The Constitution, the state Constitution still had that 21 year old uh, wording though. Again, Iowa's been following federal law. They're just changing the verbiage there to uh, codify 18 year olds being able to vote. But this also changes the words about only US citizens being able to vote in Iowa elections. It's already illegal for non-citizens to cast a ballot here. Again, this changes the verbiage in the state constitution uh, to make sure that's in there as well. The second one of these ballot measures, these uh, constitutional amendments, was clarifying the line of succession for Iowa governor. It, basically what it says is, if a lieutenant governor in Iowa would have to become the governor in the middle of a term, they'd just be un, able then to appoint their own second in the command, their own lieutenant governor, then that lieutenant would be the next in line for governor. We saw this uh, kind of play out a bit when Kim Reynolds took over in 2017. A lot of bond measures we've been tracking uh, throughout the last few weeks and months across eastern Iowa. Waterloo Community Schools we're looking for approval on a $165 million bond to combine east and west high schools. If it's approved, uh, they will be using the, uh, the old east and west high schools for middle school buildings for 8th and 9th graders. You see 100% of precincts reporting. It is a yes. They just needed that simple majority. But by a 60 to 40 margin, that bond passes. Waterloo will be combining east and west high schools. 
uh, in a, in a major move there in Black Hawk County. Still waiting on some more results in other races up there, but we'll keep an eye on everything there. Williamsburg Community Schools, we told you about this during our 9 o'clock hour on Fox 28. Looking for approval on that $22.3 million proposal. This would have helped a new career in Tech Center, make some upgrades to the middle and high schools, but you see there it needed that super majority, that 60% to pass. It does not. Does get a majority, a simple majority at 51%, but shy of what it needed to get that bond to pass in Iowa County. In Monticello, they needed that supermajority as well, and they got it for that $15 million bond for a new elementary school building and repair and renovate other buildings around the district. They'd also make a uh, central campus uh, for the high school. Decorah schools looking for approval on a $38 million bond for a new elementary school. Teachers said they were dealing with really tight spaces and leaky roofs. I don't believe we have results in from Winnesheet County yet, though, so still keeping an eye on that $38 million bond uh, for Decorah. Union Middle School. Uh, this is their first bond vote ever. They were looking for $20.5 million uh, plan approval for maintenance at elementary and middle school. Still waiting on results there as well. Highland looking for uh, a bond approval for $15 million for high school and elementary school renovations. They're about to pay off an old bond, so this new one actually wouldn't raise taxes. It would just extend the current rate. Voters in the CPU Community School District, Center Point Urbana, deciding on a $20.6 million bond for things like security, roof repairs, HVAC updates. They'd also want to build a 600 seat auditorium in the high school. The district says the current debt levy rate is about $4.05 for every $1,000 in taxable property value. That rate will not change if this bond gets approved. Again, waiting for numbers there. We do have a couple non-school bonds that we've uh, updated you on over on Fox 28. We'll do it again for you here on CBS2. That $5.5 million bond for a new golf clubhouse in the city of Waverly does not pass. It needed 60%. Yes, it ended up getting 67% no on that city golf course. That golf course is uh, about 75 years old. The other bond measure, just under $9 million for a new swimming pool in the city of Waverly. That swimming pool is 60 years old. You see there, that does get the super majority to pass by a 70 to 30 margin. Lots more to continue to watch here on Iowa's News Now. We'll be back right after this. Back on Iowa's News Now, this election night 2024, as we continue to follow results in Iowa and across the state again, it's been about an hour or so since the state of Iowa was called by the Associated Press for Donald Trump, getting those six electoral votes from the Hawkeye State for a third consecutive general election. You see there with 83% of precincts reporting Trump with a 12 point advantage in the state of Iowa. He won in uh, 16 and 20 by uh, margins of about eight and nine and a half points there. Uh, again, we keep mentioning that Des Moines Register poll that had Harris leading by three points over the weekend. Uh, there were other polls there in Emerson poll that had a, a little more of what we are seeing here. Here is a look at the latest electoral college map. Donald Trump up to 230 electoral votes. That is 40 away from the 270 needed to clinch a win. 179 so far for Kamala Harris. They're still counting a lot of votes out in California, uh, up in Min Minnesota as well. Uh, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan still uh, counting plenty of votes. North Carolina in, in the last few minutes has been called for Donald Trump as well. We want to take you live back to